Georgia's DBHDD is warning all Georgians that half of all opioid deaths happen at home when people take an oxy or a perk with a glass of alcohol for stress or to sleep. Learn more about protecting families from opioid overdoses at opioidresponse.info. Welcome to the Georgia Today podcast from GPB News. Today is Wednesday, September 27th. I'm Peter Biello. On today's episode, federal workers here in Georgia urge Congress to avert a looming government shutdown. An Atlanta-based venture capital firm offering grant programs to black women entrepreneurs only wins a victory in court. And the Braves pull off a thrilling come-from-behind victory against the Cubs last night at Truist Park. These stories and more are coming up on this edition of Georgia Today. A government shutdown means millions of federal employees could lose their paychecks, and some may still have to go to work. GPB's Amanda Andrews reports union members are demanding action. The American Federation of Government Employees advocates for fair wages and job safety for federal workers across the country, including over 9,000 members in Local 987 in Warner Robins, home to Robins Air Force Base. The AFGE has recently called for members to email and call their representatives to demand they pass funding and stop the shutdown. Employees at Robbins Air Force Base working for the Department of Defense are considered essential and will have to continue working without pay during the shutdown. For GPB News, I'm Amanda Andrews. The possible government shutdown on Sunday is prompting the Jimmy Carter Presidential Library and Museum in Atlanta to move events related to the former president's 99th birthday, which is on Sunday. The library is moving many of its birthday events, including 99-cent admission, from Sunday to Saturday. The library is run by the National Archives and Records Administration, which is expected to close if Congress fails to pass needed spending bills by the end of the week. Columbus has a new permanent police chief. City councilors yesterday named interim police chief Stoney Mathis to the full-time job. Mathis was hired as interim chief in May after the council pushed out former chief Freddie Blackman, whose attorneys threatened a racial discrimination lawsuit. Blackman later settled with the city for $400,000. Mathis said in May that his first goal would be raising officer morale. A U.S. Supreme Court decision in an Alabama redistricting case could bolster legal arguments being made by Democrats in Georgia. Justices rejected Alabama's bid yesterday to keep using a congressional map with a single majority black district. The decision sets the stage for a new map with more representation for black voters. Georgia Democrats hope to achieve the same outcome in a similar lawsuit challenging Republican drawn maps for the state's U.S. House and General Assembly districts. A federal judge is allowing an Atlanta-based venture capital firm to continue offering a grant program only to black women entrepreneurs. GPB's Devins Wald reports the lawsuit against the program could be a test case in the battle over race-based considerations. Senior U.S. Judge Thomas Thrash yesterday denied a preliminary injunction that would have blocked the grants by the Atlanta-based Fearless Fund. The judge said a lawsuit that argues the fund illegally excluded other races was not likely to succeed. The injunction was sought by a nonprofit founded by anti-affirmative action activist Edward Bloom, the man behind the admissions cases the Supreme Court ruled on in June. Bloom said the nonprofit plans to appeal. The ruling is a significant victory for Fearless Fund, which has become symbolic of the fight over corporate diversity policies. For GPB News, I'm Devin Zwald. A tractor-trailer collision with a bridge is causing major traffic delays on I-285 north of Atlanta. The Georgia Department of Transportation says four out of five lanes of westbound traffic near the Mount Vernon Highway Bridge in Sandy Springs are closed for debris cleanup. As of mid-afternoon on Wednesday, the bridge remains closed for inspection. South Georgia residents shouldn't expect Hurricane Idalia debris cleanup to include anything other than, quote, significant storm debris. That's what officials in coastal Glynn County are saying after cleanup governed by federal emergency management agency contracts began last week. The county says federal requirements mean crews only will pick up hurricane-generated debris. So if it's green, it's obviously recent debris and crews won't touch it. Also, if it's small enough to fit inside a trash bin or otherwise not, quote, cumbersome, crews will leave it. That includes leaves and otherwise normal yard waste. FEMA has declared 28 Georgia counties eligible for federal disaster assistance. That includes payments for debris removal after Edalia pummeled through South Georgia late last month. 
Officials in South Georgia's Colquitt County are considering a proposal to use a former clothing factory as housing for 200 to 300 refugees. A New York-based company wants to buy the property in Moultrie, but only if county commissioners approve the use. Company officials say they plan to house refugees for one to two years, with the federal government paying for housing, food, and medical care. Commissioners say they want to know more about the proposal before voting on it next week. A popular Chicago hot dog and Italian beef chain is expanding to Georgia. The president and CEO of Portillo's told investors last week that the company plans to open an Atlanta location. An exact site hasn't been selected. The move is part of Portillo's expansion into fast-growing southern markets. Last night, the Braves pulled off a stunning come-from-behind victory against the Cubs. Fans erupted as former Braves shortstop Dansby Swanson struck out to end the game. Final score, 7-6. The Braves had fallen behind 6-0. Then, in the bottom of the sixth, the Braves began to close the gap. A couple of homers from Kevin Pillar and Ronald Acuna Jr. helped, and Braves relief pitchers held the line. Then, in the bottom of the eighth, with the Braves down by one with two outs, catcher Sean Murphy hit what should have been an easy fly out to right center, but right fielder Seiya Suzuki dropped it. Two runs scored, giving the Braves the lead. Manager Brian Snicker. I've been ready to put the third out down my card and then just happened to peek up and see it, so take it. With the win, a Braves' so-called magic number is now down to one. That's the number of games the Braves need to win to clinch home field advantage throughout the National League Championship Series. The magic number for the World Series is two, and the Braves have five games left. The Braves are scheduled to start the division series at home on Saturday, October 7th. Pitching has many fans concerned as Atlanta heads into the postseason. Max Fried and Charlie Morton are both on the injured list. Fried has a blister on his finger, and Morton's got some right index finger inflammation. And last night, Bryce Elder gave up four walks. He walked five in his previous start against the Phillies and has a 9.49 ERA in his last three starts. Snitker says he is not concerned about Elder, given that this is his first full season. You know, it's been a long year for him. It's his first time, man, the, to go, you know, the entire distance. So, um, you know, it may have something to do with it. You know what I mean? It's his first experience with all this. The Braves and the Cubs face off again tonight at Truist Park. Rookie Darius Vines is scheduled to make the start for the Braves. And that is it for this edition of Georgia Today. If you want to learn more about any of these stories, visit gpb.org slash news. And remember to subscribe to this podcast. It's an easy way for us to just pop up automatically in your podcast feed tomorrow afternoon and every weekday afternoon. And if you have feedback for us, we would love to hear it. Send us an email. The address is georgiatoday at gpb.org. I'm Peter Biello. Thanks again for listening. We'll see you tomorrow. At a time when information continues to come at us faster and faster, sometimes you need to hit pause and rewind. NPR's Throughline takes you back in time to the source of the news stories filling your feed. Find NPR's Throughline wherever you get your podcasts.